Well, with the pandemic raging through most of 2020, more people than ever turned to television for good old fashioned escape. What were we watching? Well, my co-host Brent and Pam join us now with their offerings. Brent, Pam, it's great to see you guys. Hello, hello. Hi, great to see you, Chuck. Well, yeah. I th Brent. thank goodness for television, you know, especially during the, the pandemic. And one of the things, we're gonna get some of your picks coming up, but one of the things that we all three, I think just clamored to more than ever this year, and it became the Emmy sweep of the year, Schitt's Creek. So. One that we're going to talk about it on the back side, but uh, we thought we'd give a little uh, Schitt's Creek um, roundtable talk with some of the cast. So take a look at this, and we'll talk about it on the back side. Like when you talk about my, my bad posture, when other characters talk yeah. about it, I, I don't even have to work at that. No. I just yeah. come and I, I have that. <laughs> and when you talk about things like my natural deodorant not working, that's yeah. not... <laughs> That's, I wouldn't say uh, that's like an Alexis thing. I'd say you maybe that's drew life. it from real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And brought that in for me to make me feel yeah. more at home yeah, and yeah, safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, yeah. you talk about the whiteness of my skin. That's yeah. not something that I have to work at. That literally is here mm -hmm. yeah. on display. Yeah, it's yeah. actually. I thought you do the face too. I thought you do the thumb. Oh yeah, and you look like a thumb. thumb. That is my I didn't want to spoil that moment. Yeah, they said Patrick looked like a thumb. So, I mean, what is it, guys, when we look at the Shits Creek cast, I mean, we love the show, but you just see even the cast talking. So, Brent, I'm going to start with you. What do you think it is about Shits Creek that just, just attracts everybody to it, that just gives you the warm and fuzzies? One of the things I think we just witnessed it is that they all are sim seemingly friendly. It's sort of an ensemble cast. You know, they've been able to to work together for this amount of time. They've been able to build their characters. You know, they said from the beginning they didn't feel like that they were, you know, a regular sitcom, if you will, and that they were able to build up their characters and develop them over time. And it's it, it, it ended in what you saw there, just everybody having a good time together. It's a play. You should have fun, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> Pam, what do you think it was about Shit's Creek that got you through, helped get you through, 2020 well it's so quirky right and i just love a quirk every character has something wacky about them but yet they all fit and work together and there's the perfect dose of feel good in the relationships you know they're not perfect but they ebb and flow and you know get back together i i, I just love it I love it. I wish I could quote lines. That's not my gift. I'm not good about the comebacks and the quoting, but I'd love to just have a bunch of the lines in my pocket for everyday life. Oh, Moira, Moira steals the show on those. The, the, I think I have more of hers, we all do, than anybody. <laughs> and, and wasn't that the perfect way to kind of bring the series to an end was to have, like, at the Emmy Awards, they swept everything. What went through your head, Brent, that night? Well, I, you know, I wanted it to happen, and it was still kind of a surprise because you think, oh, that's just too too coincidental that they all win. But it was sort of a well, a, a, a vindication, if you will, of what we were saying earlier. Like, if you let a show happen and you let the characters grow and you let the writers do what they know how to do, it's going to be great. And it was sort of like the last sort of like, aha, we told you so. It's been a good show, you know, the whole time. Um, and then to have that validation from everybody. And I know several people who didn't even start watching it until after that. So that kind of swept more people into like, wow, maybe I really have been missing something. So it was sort of like another kickoff to a new beginning even. <laughs> Absolutely. Pam, I want to make sure that we also get to talk about one of your shows that, I mean, it's a really buzzed about show. People talk about this one, Cobra Kai. We're going to take a look at it, and we'll talk to you about it on the backside. This is Cobra Kai. I don't know why you'd ever want to bring back Cobra Kai. What, you looking to take karate? It's my dad. You can still make something of yourself. Like your old pal Daniel LaRusso? You want to stick around? Learn a few things? Yagi Do is about defending yourself and protecting others. All right, so Pam, tell us about Cobra Kai. <laughs> well, for me personally, it gives me an overwhelming sense. It's entertaining. It gives me this overwhelming sense of nostalgia that I take with me on every episode. And I was two years late to the party, right? I started watching it uh, during when it came out on Netflix during this pandemic. And I have recommended it to so many people. And some of the feedback I have after that recommendation is it's a little cheesy. Well, okay, fine. So what? <laughs> Sometimes things are a little cheesy. It just, it, it rings all the bells for me in terms of thinking back for 30 years ago 
and it's just fun and light and I love it. And I saw a perfect meme on uh, social media where it says, what are you doing during the pandemic? And it says boomers, millennials, um, Gen X or everybody. I mean, everybody but Gen X are going out and getting COVID and then Gen X, Gen Xers, which, you know, I am one. We're watching Cobra Kai at home. <laughs> and, you know, I just I just love it. Absolutely. Okay, so Cobra Kai, it's on our list. Brent, let's take a look at one on your list. It uh, ran for 11 seasons. This was the season finale year. Let's take a little, little look at Modern Family. Talk about it quickly on the back side. Here's Modern Family. We lost our baby in the car and people are judging us. I'm going to break it. Sir, please tell your wife to relax. That's a man. Really? Here comes trouble. I'm Juliana. I'm Big Speed. Yeah, what the hell is that? Dude, I am your father. <laughs> That's what I said to you when you were coming out of your mom's lady part. Oh, my God. We still always have my special girl. <laughs> You'd never leave me, would you, baby? Okay, Brent, about 30 seconds. How did Modern Family's last season help get you through 2020? Well, not just the last season, but the nostalgia of the reruns. It kind of, I decided to go back and rewatch it, and I think that helped, you know, because nostalgia is everything right now. We want to remember back to a time at least prior to four years or so ago, but especially just the last in it, the, the intertwining, the way that they take the storyline and weave it through all these characters. And, and it just, it gets me every time. I sit down and I leave feeling better no matter what. Even if it's a heavy episode when they've had characters pass away, you still have laughs. It just, I don't know, it just, it, just, it, it leaves me feeling happy. So, uh, okay, we're out of time, guys. I got to say, happy holidays. We're so glad that this television helped get us through the end of the year. <laughs> you guys have a great holiday season. Look forward to seeing you in the new year. Same to you. You too, Chuck. All right, that's all the time we have for this edition of Out and About Today. You guys, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2021. Good night. <laughs>